if everyone is ready. Uh, first, thanks, thanks uh, to you all for coming uh, today. Uh, so I will present my research internship on the detection of uh, epileptic spikes on EEG and MEG signals. Um, so first of all, um, I will present a motivation for this uh, project uh, before um, doing a brief literature review presenting the objectives and the approach I have chosen, and then present the preliminary results I have. You may wonder, uh, what do EEG and EMEG stand for? So EEG is uh, electroencephalography. It's the recording of the electrical activity of the brain, while EMEG uh, stands for magnetoencephalography, and it's uh, the recording of the magnetic activity of the brain. And uh, as you can see here, an extract of an EEG signal, due to their uh, complex and noisy nature, it's hard and time consuming for the uh, epileptologists to analyze them. This is what motivates the, this project. The idea is to use Brainstorm and Evalomed to be able to detect epileptic spikes on MEG and EEG signals. Brainstorm is a user-friendly software used for brain recordings, in including MEG and EEG signals, while Evadomed, as you may know, is a, a framework using deep learning for medical analysis. And what we want to achieve is the following. We would like a user to be able, uh, after um, having done the recording to use Brainstorm on his local computer to do all the pre-processing steps he wants. Uh, for instance, uh, artifact removal, filtering, feature extraction on the time domain or frequency domain before using uh, either a, a cluster or his own computer if he has enough resources on it to train a model developed in Evadomed and use it uh, in his, on his own computer uh, to detect the epileptic uh, spikes uh, on a given trial. It should be noted that we want this model to be agnostic to the number of channels uh, to be able to, to deal with several uh, densities of electrodes and both EEG and MEG signals. This is the reason why the objectives uh, are manifold. Um, and uh, when it comes to EEG and MEG analysis, number of recent studies are based on convolutional neural networks or recurrent neural networks uh, because they have the strength to be able to extract relevant features for the model. But they, are, they also have a certain amount of limitations. First of all, when it comes to convolutional neural networks, they are achieving tremendous results on images or object segmentation, but they are limited when it comes to global dependencies. They are, they are strong for local uh, dependencies on the features. Uh, they are highly kernel dependent. Um, so the performance on, of the model are highly um, transformed if the size of the kernel is changed. For instance, a larger kernel uh, will uh, be limited to extract deep features, while small kernel will be able to extract deep features, but will have limitation on the range of exploration. And moreover, they have a huge amount of trainable parameters. And when it comes to recurrent neural networks, uh, they are limited for long sequences and this is often the, the case on EEG and MEG signals. We can have signal of several seconds. Uh, and moreover, they, um, they are lacking of efficiency because we cannot parallelize the steps in uh, recurrent neural networks. Currently, the method used in uh, this project, the Evadomed EEG project, is to treat the signals as if they were images. So at a given time step, what we want is to map 
the signals coming from the several channels onto a two-dimensional Euclidean space to be able to treat it with uh, an image architecture. So what we do is uh, quite similar to taking slices in MRI. So at each time step, we will slice the signal and using uh, each electrode's position to create a, a corresponding pixel where the value of the pixel corresponds to the value of the signal at this time step. So we obtain several slices. And then what we, uh, what we can do is to concatenate all those slices on the time axis. And we apply uh, a modified 3D unit, which is uh, uh, implemented in Ivadomed uh, for segmentation. And we know that this model uh, achieves great result on segmentation. But the issue is that we need to create a huge amount of data to be able to apply this model. And moreover, as in the 3D unit, uh, a lot of convolutional layers are used, we have a huge amount of trainable parameters. Just to figure out the amount of data we have to create, if we consider a trial, so an EEG or MEG uh, trial, uh, which lasts two seconds with a sample frequency of 100 Hertz, we have 200 time step. And if we take, for instance, 100 times 100 pixels, we have 200,000 data points. So this is a, a huge amount of data. We want to, we don't want that. We want to reduce this, uh, this amount. So as I said, the research objectives are manifold. First of all, we want to develop a deep learning pipeline to be able to detect the epilepsy spikes on both EEG and MEG signals. We want this pipeline to be agnostic to the number of channels, as I said, because we want to be able to deal with several uh, electrode densities. We want, of course, to detect, but also to localize the spikes on the time axis to help the epileptologist to know when those uh, spikes occur. And most of all, we want to find an alternative to mapping signals on this uh, said 2D Euclidean space to reduce the amount of data. So the approach is the following. What we have is a, a data set uh, corresponding to a single subject, a child, uh, which contains 655 clips of two seconds with EEG and MEG channels. So we have 50 EEG channels for this subject and 274 MEG channels. And the ground truth is built as following. We will count the number of spikes present in the MEG or, uh, or EEG trial. And what we obtain, as you may see, is a severe imbalance class distribution because uh, as the amount of spikes increases, the number of trials which, con which contains such amount of spikes decreases. So this is the reason why we have an imbalance, um, an imbalance data set, but it will be taken into account uh, during the training. And then the main idea is to deal with the following model. So it's named S3T for Spatial Temporal Tiny Transformer. So it's a transformer-based model. And the concept is to transform the trial, so either the EEG or MEG um, or EEG or MEG signals, to transform it into a representation that the classifier will be able to understand. So a distinguishing representation with a lot of spatial and temporal information. The key concepts of this uh, model is that it uses attention mechanism to learn the global dependencies of the signals. Uh, I remind that with convolutional neural networks, it was hard to get the global dependencies on the signal. It also perceives the importance of the different channel features, which will be used for the classification. So it 
the model learns on what to focus on to be able to classify the trial. It's of course agnostic to the number of channels. And last but not least, it has fewer parameters than most convolutional neural networks, but also recurrent neural networks or graph neural networks. So as I said, this model is a, a transformer-based model. And in fact, we know that transformers are achieving tremendous results in the sentence translation, as it has been proven in the paper, uh, Attention is all you need, in 2017. And the concept about transformer is quite simple. If we consider an input sentence in French, and we want to be able to translate it in Spanish. What we have to do is to deal with an encoder decoder. So the encoder is, knows two languages, uh, in this case, French and a new language, we will call it language T. And he is the only one with the decoder to know this language. So when we take the input, which is a sentence in French, the encoder will encode or translate this sentence, and we obtain a new representation of the sentence in language T. And the decoder is able to translate or decode this new representation into Spanish. This is the basic concept of transformer. And this is similar to what we want to do. We want to take the raw EEG and image signals and to transform it into a new representation that the classifier will be able to decode. And we want inside of this representation, the maximum amount of temporal and spatial information. So the architecture of the model is the following. We take as input an EEG trial or an MEG trial. So um, it should be noted that the dimen dimension of this trial uh, are C EEG times T. So for the EEG trial, it will be 50 channels times the number of time steps. In our data set, we have uh, two seconds trials with a frequency of 100 Hertz. So we have 200 time steps. Here you can see a pre-processing step, which was done in the, uh, the uh, uh, paper introducing this uh, model, but we do not do any preprocessing step. We apply a spatial filter, which purpose, which purpose is to um, is to improve the differences between trials which are not in the same class. So it will help the model to um, to know uh, to differ uh, trials coming from different class and to, for the classification task. Then a spatial transforming is done. And uh, basically the model will learn on which channels to focus on to be able to classify. And the same idea is done in temporal transforming. The model will learn when to focus on or on, on which time segments to focus on to be able to classify. And then after those three blocks, an average pooling is done and uh, we have a fully connected layer and we have as output a probability vector of dimension, the number of classes we have. So in our data set, we have seven classes uh, coming from zero spike to six spikes present in the trial. And the uh, each entry, the entry E of this uh, probability vector will design the probability of being of class E. So as you may notice, uh, in the second and third blocks, the spatial transforming and temporal transforming, uh, it is mentioned about attention. So we will focus on this attention model because this is what, um, this is at the heart of the model and what enables the model to learn when and on what to focus on. So the attention model uh, is, uh, is the following. Uh, in fact, it's, uh, it's a, a way to compute an important score on 
the signals to be able to tell to the model on what he, sh he, he should focus on. So if we take uh, three learnable matrices, Q, K, and V, we apply this formula, as you can see here. And uh, in fact, what you may understand is that the closer the matrices Q and K are, the higher the importance score is. The usage of uh, softmax activation is just to map those scores between zero and one. And then we multiply all this uh, mapping score by V. And in fact, what we obtain is a new representation of the signals where all the important features are highlighted. So if we take a, a, as a, an example, the case of the translation, the sentence translation, in fact, in the matrices Q, K, and V, uh, it's only vectors which are stacked and each vector represents a word in this sentence. So we obtain a new representation where the important word in the sentence, when I say important, it, it's uh, important about the meaning of the sentence, will be highlighted while the less important words will be pushed down to zero. So the model will know on which words to focus on to be able to translate the sentence. And in our problem, it's the same idea. We will be able to, to tell to the model on which channels to focus on. So the vectors will represent a channel. And it can also represent a time segment. And the important time segment for the classification task will be highlighted why the less important ones will be pushed down to zero. And it leads to the following simplified architecture of the model to, under, to better understand what it does. So the input and output are, the, uh, of, of course, the same. The first block of spatial filter is here to improve the characteristics, the characteristics of each class to uh, to be able to defer more trials coming from several classes. Then the spatial transforming is here so that the model can learn on what to focus on. And the temporal transforming is here so that the model can learn on which time segments to focus on. And after these three blocks, what we have is a new representation of dimension one times t. So this is a new representation that only the classifier can understand, which contains both spatial and temporal dependencies. And then the classifier will give, will give as output the probability vector I mentioned above. So to train this, uh, this uh, model, I follow the, um, this uh, training framework. So, um, I split, it, I split the, uh, the data set, so the 655 trials of the data set. We have 25% on the test set, 60% on the training set, and 15% uh, on the validation set, as you can see here. I have chosen the following parameters for a training. Uh, so I use the PyTorch. Uh, library, the optimizer Adams with a learning rate of uh, 10 to the next three and a batch size of eight. And as it is, uh, as, it is uh, as it is often done in multi-classification, I use a press entropy loss. Um, it should be noted that um, later on the, the training of this model and uh, on the working I'm uh, currently doing, the learning rate and the batch size uh, will be changed to improve the model and to see on what we can uh, we can uh, uh, work on, and uh, uh, I also intend to modify the optimizer to have a, a, a better variant of the Adams optimizer. I'm currently studying it, and I have obtained the following preliminary result. 
with the evalu evaluation of the model. So the, uh, these are only preliminary results. And as you can see, the best, uh, the best configuration is the following. Using a, a depth of three and with 30 epochs, we obtain an accuracy of 0.73 and a F1 score of 0.58. But it should be mentioned that there is a lot of work to do because this is only the, the beginning of the, of the project and uh, uh, the beginning of the training of this model. So I have a lot of next steps. First, to improve the model and to work on it uh, theoretically and practically to modify the hyperparameters and parameters, but also to work on the regularization to avoid overfitting uh, by uh, choosing dropouts layers or L1, L2 regularization. Most of all, I also have to take into account the imbalance inside of the data set. So, put a weight on the loss and also compute a weighted F1 score instead of computing uh, an average F1 score to see how the model works considering these, uh, the several weights of each classes in the data set. As I said, I have to work on the optimizer because I found a very interesting paper uh, which uses a variant of the Adams algorithm. And last but not least, I have to think of a way to learn the localization of the spikes on the time axis. Currently, what the model is able to do is given a trial, he can say with a 0.73 accuracy, uh, he can say the number of spikes present in this trial, but he cannot localize the spike. We, are, we have quite small trials, which lasts two seconds, but we want to be able to tell the uh, epileptologist precisely or almost precisely when the spikes occur. So this will be a huge part of my, uh, my work. And as I said, uh, I've only been here for two months, so I plan to have a, a lot to tweak on and to work on later. And every feedback is, uh, is welcome. Thank you for uh, your attention.